brethren. Uh, the scripture that Brother Tony will be ministering on is Romans 4, 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. When I considered this, I thought, you know, this scripture could be a summary statement for my walk of faith, my trek in the wilderness with Christ, because all through my walk of faith, I've always asked, what saith the scripture? Every time, all through the time that I've known about God, when I've been with the another group or whatever, I've always said, well, what does the scripture say about this? And I haven't always agreed with what I've heard others preach about the scripture. So I think it's very important that we in ourselves ask, no matter who it is up here speaking, what saith the scripture? Yeah, amen. Did you know that the scriptures actually speak? They are alive. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick or alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the div dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of your thoughts, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the scriptures are very, very powerful. As we examine what the scriptures say, we are changed by the scriptures. So if we really want to know what they say and, and we examine these things and we diligently seek them, then we are changed by what the scriptures say. And there's a depth to them that, that cannot even be reached in this world. It'll be the world to come before we can actually see the full depth of the scriptures. So I, I'm just going to be brief. And I just wanted to state just a few scriptures. There's many scriptures that's impacted my life. And I just kind of randomly looked at some and chose these. So I just want to read a few of them. John 1.1, 1, 1. this was a big impact on me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The group I used to be with changed that to the Word was a God, and they used a little g. So for me to actually see who the Word was, that he actually was God, this was a big thing for me to learn what the scripture said about Jesus Christ. Amen. John 3, 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the scriptures say we must be born of water and of spirit. So all of those that are born of water and spirit can enter into the kingdom of God. But you have to be born of both. And, and I used to believe that not all men got the Spirit of God in them, that there were some that were privileged, and, but they were all believers, but not all believers had the Spirit of God. So when I saw what the Scripture saith about these things, it made a big impact on my life. Amen. Romans 6, 3, 4. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, should, uh, even so we should walk in newness of life. So when I learned about this newness of life that the scripture spoke about, what a change my life had. The scriptures are very powerful, but you have to believe them. Here's another one, and it'll be one of the last few. This one is not a... Is an encouraging one, but 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, these things here, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with um, fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. There's many that call themselves Christians that don't believe that this is going to happen. But what saith the scriptures? Amen. So we have to make sure that we believe 
that we uh, search the scriptures to see what they say. And we know as we search them, we find Jesus in the scriptures. And we have men that have to proclaim these things. But we have to, even though there's a man up here speaking, again, I want to re reiterate that you need to know that what they're saying is what the scripture says. Just because there's someone speaking, I don't care who it is. If you have a question in your mind when this person's up here speaking, then you should search the scriptures and see what saith the scriptures on this. Amen. You know, Satan uses the scriptures. Yeah. He has from the beginning, we know this. And it's his aim to destroy your faith. So make sure that you know that what you believe is what the scriptures say. If you're not sure, pray to the Father. And he will, get, he, will, he will show you if you really want to know. Diligently seek these things, and he will show them to you. Um, he gives us saints, as I've said, to, to provide these things, and he gives us the scriptures. So, as Brother Tony comes up now, it's my prayer for, for all of you here and all saints, including myself, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of, this call, of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, Brother Tony will come. As I get my stuff situated here, I, I did want to thank Brother. You know, I'm so thankful that when we get up here, we don't have to get behind them plastic podiums that you see everywhere anymore. You know, Brother Robert built this right here, and I'm thankful for it. And this is something you can preach from. You know, uh, the Lord's table is not the only thing, brother, that is curiously missing from the, from the ch modern church today. Uh, you'll go in, you won't find a nice, good wooden pulpit anymore. Matter of fact, we put wheels on ours so we can take it with us wherever we go to preach from. And Brother Roberts made us a, a fine one in our own assembly. And I, I just want to go on record that, because if you've had to preach behind one of them little music podiums or one of them plastic deals, you, you'll really appreciate one like this. Now, uh, for what saith the scriptures? What saith the scriptures? That's a question that needs to be on everybody's mind. Don't, we don't think for a moment there's any power in what we say. Okay? Uh, if people are going to be moved for God, if they're going to be, if, if they, if they're going to be uh, moved in his direction, it's going to be the power of God to do it through his spirit. He's going to have to direct people and move them and it's not by what we do. It's, it's what saith the scripture. So we, we want to use that. Earthly generals, now they can move with an oratorical speech, a, a, a fine delivery. Now they have the ability to move thousands of men into battle and things like this. But see, only the power of God, only the spirit of God can move in a man's heart and direct him. So this is uh, so what saith the scriptures. Now it's important what you think of the scriptures, how you think. You see, determines how you're going to live. And so it's important how you think of the scriptures. You can ask yourself, are the scriptures, are they important to me? Are the scriptures like the main thing in, in my thinking? Are they, are they instrumental in, in guiding me and am I reflect on the scriptures? And, and is that my base of operation in my mind? But don't you know, brother, we must know what the scriptures say in order to do this. You know, considering they're able to make one wise into salvation, then we need to know what the Scriptures say. Amen. And those who desire just to know what the Scriptures say, you'll often hear them say something like this. Don't tell me what you think the Scripture says or means. Just tell me what saith the Scriptures, you see. Uh, several hundred times the New Testament, it references back. It's all, oh, even in Brother Roberts, text he preached from. There's a reference back. Paul makes a reference back to the Old Testament. Back to what God said in the past. It's constantly referencing you back to what God said years ago. Surely the, surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets, uh, Amos said. So these, God is already 
said something about this. Mm -hmm. It was what God had said to the prophets that laid the foundation for that salvation that Jesus would bring in. Je that, was what, that was the work of God to, to get this ready. It was what God said to the prophets and that, uh, that uh, men were able to go back into the scriptures. And, 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 uh, and it was what God said by the prophets. It's that great bulk of revelation that the spirit of truth would be able to open up and to men later on. So that all these things God had prepared. And so we can say, what saith the scriptures? Yeah. Now, that uh, what saith the scriptures, now, that presumes someone knows what the scripture says. Or at least they can, at the very least, they can find out what the scripture says, what says the scriptures. You've got you to either know what it says or you've got to be able to find out. At the, at the question, and, and this is, you know, and this is a question, uh, it's just already been said today, this is a question every man must answer. Each and every man must account for this himself. This is like a, this is a question that's being asked humanity. It's being asked each one privately and individually, and everybody's going to have to answer. Matter of fact, everybody's given an answer, whether they realize it or not. Now, <clears throat> the question is not, what saith the preacher, okay? The question is not what saith the minister, okay? But, uh, <clears throat> but what saith the scripture? That's asking you. You know, that's asking you. Uh, God, he only asks questions, you know, that he can answer. Mm -hmm. See, so you, you've got to know what the scripture says. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I can tell you in this time and day, brethren, that we were living in, you know, you're better off not knowing what most of the preachers are saying. So it would behoove you, okay, to find out what the Scripture says yourself. Yeah. We've often lamented and we, we mourn the condition of the people of God, the lack of familiarity. We talk about it often because it's a grievous thing, the, the lack of familiarity the people of God have uh, with the Word of God, what, what God has said. They just don't know it, you see. And it's the most regrettable thing to say the least. Uh, there's enough blame to go around for everybody. There certainly is. I mean, you can say this and you can say that, but I want to go on record. I think we're alive. I want to go on record on this. I'm, I want to say, I want to be able to say it in one clip to, to you that this matter of ignorance of the Word of God, that people don't know the Word of God, much of this, that you can blame a system for this, brethren. Yeah, I'm going to call it, a, you can blame the clergy system for this. The ignorance of what God has said was, was helped along by this system, okay? The damage to the body of Christ, which can be seen right now, we see it going on today, was caused primarily by the professional minister who came in for hire and he took away the ministry from the saints of God. That's what happened. And uh, when you look back at the whole thing, when you look back, hindsight's always the best. But when you look back, you can just say to those honest and sincere men who all they want to do was preach and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, you, you just have to look back and say, you know, you just, you know, when you, when you saw that the people had no interest in spiritual things, you should have just packed up and left. You know, that, that's, what, that's what you could say now. You didn't know that then. Instead of propping them up, you should have just left them. You just left them and went somewhere else. I'm telling you the honest truth. Right. Uh, instead of begging them and pleading with them to come to church regularly, you should have just left them alone and just let them fizzle out. That's what's going to happen. I know it's a hard thing to do for, for young preachers with families to pack up and leave and do all these kind of things. A young preacher, uh, he had a family and he had wives and children. He had to think about this. You know, the, the least that a Bible college could have done was prepare a man with some kind of skill or teach him how to work so he wouldn't have to depend on a bunch of wishy-washy Christians for his paycheck. That's the least the Bible colleges could have done, was teach him how to work and do something. Okay, they didn't do that. They didn't do it. Now, you know what I mean. How to get out and find a job so you wouldn't have to depend on a bunch of people like that. You're exactly right. The Apostle Paul, he depended on God for his needs. But you know, the Scriptures, the Spirit, it, it said that Paul was a tent maker. Remember? That wasn't just for, you know, the, uh, for fine details. That's just to let us know. See, when, when push come to shove, Paul could preach the truth and because he, he, could, he, could, he could provide for himself. Amen. These are just some of the reasons, brethren. <clears throat> it makes me sick when I hear professional churches use the word minister and preacher and things like this. 
because of our past. And you know, I tell you, I, and, and I'll be through with this, and, but you know, brethren, you, you brethren here, you suffer through this, listening to these things, and, and I appreciate it, but you know, you have to remember, you're a platform from which we can proclaim these things. That you, you, you sit there and you listen to these things, but it's, 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 there's a bigger, there's bigger audience than us. There's people who will listen to these things. Perhaps it'll help them in some way. So you, you, provide a, you provide a means by which we can declare these things. It's gotten to the point where I can hardly stand to hear the word minister, pastor, church, Christian anymore. Just because it brings to my mind what a terrible mess we've got and what we've done. I'm looking over this, and you know, I, I, uh, it's a terrible, every, well, I tell you what, brethren, when we're talking about what the scriptures said, what saith the scriptures, we're talking, of course, we're talking about what God has said, That's right. Amen. and what Paul calls Paul calls the inspired word of God. That's what he says. The sacred scriptures. Yeah, they, they are the holy word of God. When you come to the word, you can ask, oh, we can really ask, what say the scriptures? You know, we can really ask that question. Because, brethren, the scriptures have something to say. They have something to tell us. God didn't create this universe and, he, and put man on a planet and just leave it to man just to figure it all out and put it together. He didn't do that. He gave them some instruction. He gave them a written word. It, it, uh, what accompanied his creation was something he put in writing, you see. It, or something he put in writing that really answers all the questions that, that the creation prompted men to ask. Okay? What, God, what God's Word says, it, it deals with the key issues that lie to every, at the cause of every man's burden. God's got something to say about this burden that's been placed on you. He's, he's, he's wrote it down to you. You've got to figure it out. It addresses the matter. You, you're thinking about life and death. Men wonder about life and death. Well, God's Word, he, he wrote it down. It's a word about that. God doesn't deal with the silly issues. Of, uh, that men deal with. He deals with the issues that matter. And, uh, Jesus day. You remember? To tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus did. You know, he didn't respond to that day. You know, and today we have all kind of issues that come up that the word of God doesn't exp doesn't have an opinion on it. But the men has tried to extract things out of the word of God. But see, God's word deals with big issues and the main issues that deal with, with the life and death and things of this matter. The word of God, it will speak to a man's need for peace in his own soul. It will speak to his need for joy and satisfaction in his world and, 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 and while telling him of the world to come, you see. Everything I see in this universe, everything with my eyes I see, you know, uh, I, I ask the question, where did it all come from? And, uh, and <clears throat> the word Word of God addresses that. See, God has answered that for you. The scripture is a word from God. It came, it came with the creation of all things, and it answers all these kinds of questions, important and critical things that, that men want to know, that men need to know. The scriptures have something to say. There's a word from God on all these matters. Uh, Paul talking to Timothy, he said, Now all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness. Now, <clears throat> we bring these things to our memory. So it's important to, to remember that God is a, he has spoken on these things. The word, as you know, inspiration, very powerful word in the scriptures. It's only used one time right here, this word for inspiration. Two words, made of two words. God breathed inspiration. You know, it came from God, you see. God breathed. We know that from Scripture that the, the, the life is, is in the very breath of God. That's where life comes from. Is, he breathes life. <clears throat> it's exhilarating, isn't it, just to think about? God breathed life into the nostrils of Adam, <laughs> just like that. We call them inspired. They're inspired. And God breathed them. They come from God, the Scriptures themselves. They tell us that the Word of God is alive. I, I'm alive and I'm active. 
It does exactly what God says. So then, brethren, you can know whatever God says cannot help but take place. They are alive, and they, they come from God. There's no chance. <laughs> There's no chance that uh, what God says will not happen. It, because this word is actually doing something. It's a, this is something that is not commonly known. We, we ain't spent enough time preaching this, you know. That's why, brethren, in regard to salvation, we, we shouldn't be dealing at all with men, okay? In regards to salvation, we shouldn't be dealing at all with men. It should be with God. Because God, he's, he has life and his breath. Uh, actually, we, sh we should have as little as to do as, as possible with men and when it comes to this. It is God in whom we have to do. It is, in, it is God to whom we give an account, you see. As all men will answer to him. I think Sister Melissa read this. For the word of God is quick and powerful, alive and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's the, the word of God. It, it's only the word of God can do what God wants it to do. Now, when you're dealing with the word of God, Scripture, the Holy Scriptures, now you, uh, for all intent and purposes, you're dealing with God. You see? It means God is holy, right? His people are holy. His word is holy. Everything God has anything to do with, it, it's either holy or it, he makes it holy. Paul told Timothy, as from a child I hast known the holy scriptures. Holy scriptures. Well, men used to view the scriptures as the holy scriptures. I remember a time men were afraid to take away and add to the scriptures. You better not be caught throwing the Bible around. <laughs> you know, it's just it was impressed upon you. That's, a, that's, not the, uh, that's, not a, that's not just a regular book. That's the holy scriptures, the holy Bible. We know that God has taken notice of, um, of some things. And... Uh, and he's given us solemn warnings in his scriptures, okay, about certain things. Uh, in Hebrews 4, 13, following this verse I just read, for the word of God is quick and powerful. He's talking about the word of God. And then the following verse, verse 13, he has this. I never connected this before like I did this time, but... He's talking about the Word of God, what it's able to do, what it does. Okay, talking about what, that's what the Word of God does. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Amen. You see, it said, God and his Word here, they're, they're one and the same. Yeah. God is working. His Word is working what he wants to do. So how's God getting these things accomplished on the face of the earth? It's, it's the word of God. It's working. And it, it, and when it, it will never, well, you know it, it doesn't come to him void, right. return to him void. Right. Now, you know, now, men, they, they, they've got into, they painted themselves into a corner, talking about religious men. They've taken the word of God and they've used it to make earthly empires. They've even used the word of God to divide the people of God. What say the scriptures? Now, I, uh, I'm going to change the subject. Uh, not the subject. I'm going to change the past here. God has intentionally revealed himself as one who communicates. He is. He has. And, it's, and it's, everything God has done, it's, it's been, you can see it as, a, as an effort to communicate. He's communicating what he's thinking and what he's doing is what God is doing. According to what we have been made known to us, like in Genesis and throughout the scripture, I'm thinking of Genesis in particular, in the beginning, and then in John 1, we've got another kind of an in-beginning uh, uh, aspect there. We, we, can, we can see these two primary scriptures here, and we can, we can see that God is his, he's very intent on men knowing what he's doing and, 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 and getting, getting himself uh, seen as one who uh, communicates. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, we could suppose that God is continuously revealing and speaking from, from himself through his word 
and, and through his creation and, and, and everything he's done, he's continuously having something to say. God is the only one speaking, for, as, as far as the saints are concerned, God is the only one speaking that we, uh, that we really care to listen to. He is the only speaking mind, intelligent mind, that we care to listen to. As far as, and that's, that's the way it should be. When a man speaks in behalf of God, like when anybody gets up before the saints and addresses them, he, what he says, it should be, it sure enough should be supported by what God has said. You, you need to be able to support what you're saying with what God has said. Now, God is one who communicates. He speaks. He creates. He does things. God spoke out of heaven. He said, this is my beloved son. Hear he him. Now, nobody likes to try to talk over somebody else. And God's not going to do it either. And you know, I don't blame him. That's why he told, he told, he told him, said, now listen, listen to my son and listen to what he says. Now, you've got to understand that he's saying that today. This is the same word. Men need to, they need to just like hush up and, and, and get quiet and, 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 uh, and they need to start talking uh, about what God is talking about. And they need to start listening to what God is saying. Right. Now, we don't want to think that what God has said, what saith the scriptures, we don't want to think that what God has said is like in past tense. Like, like God said something like a long time ago and, and things have changed. And, you know, if you're exposed to the right academic Influence will have you think in, in, in terms of culture, that God spoke in this culture and that this culture is different. You know what I'm getting at. But see, past tense has to do with time. That's, a, that's, a, that's speaking about time. And the Word of God, you know, doesn't operate within the constraints of time. So it, it, God's words exist outside of time. So God doesn't speak in past tense. God speaks in present tense. Now, we're subject to time. That's why we'll have, we'll have a, a present past and future tense. But God, God's word is always present time. God spoke in times past, the scripture said. But it was mankind's past he's talking about. In our past times, God spoke then. And he's still speaking, is what I'm saying. Today, his word is speaking to all men. When we're reading the scriptures and studying the scriptures, we should expect the word of God to speak to us. Because just like it always has spoken, God's word is speaking. When, the, when Philip caught up with the chariot, <clears throat> when he caught up with the chariot, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a, a very influential man, reading the scriptures. And uh, the place of the scriptures it gives us was uh, right there in Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. And the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, he said, what saith the scriptures? Does this prophet speak of himself or does he speak of another? And, uh, and with great excitement, I'm sure, that's just what every saint wants, this kind of question. So Philip, he, he was able to jump right in there. Hey, he was speaking of another. And let me tell you about him. So the scriptures say that Philip picked up right there and expounded to him Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> for every topic known to men, Men have come up with what the scripture says. They write books and they write tracts, articles, and, and, and they preach sermons. And uh, <clears throat> all about what they say, the scripture saith. You know, they've got some take on, on what the scripture saith. Most of our religious past has been concerned with statements that communicate what the scripture saith about some particular topic. Okay? <clears throat> every Every... Preacher, every stripe and color, they're quick to give you what the scripture saith, their, their take of it. Their, their, what the scripture saith on baptism. What the scripture saith on repentance. What the scripture saith on the Lord's table, and on and on. And on. The, what the scripture say about divorce and marriage, and on and on and on they'll go. And, uh, and, and, and men can be exhorted in this manner, and, they, and you can preach after, after this fashion, but how when we come to the scriptures, to find out what God says, we, we, want, we want to be able to see it in the, in the light as, as, as it's been delivered to us, you see. And what I'm getting at is that God has 
formed his word in the context of Jesus Christ. We should never lift, we should never lift a topic outside of Christ and expound it. It should be expounded in the terms of Jesus Christ. When a man comes to the scriptures, a sincere and honest man, that's, that's a man whose heart's free of any kind of entrapments. He will find that God, when he comes to the scripture, you start studying the scriptures and reading the scriptures, he'll find that God is speaking about his son. That's who he's speaking about. He's not speaking about these other issues that are not be interesting to talk about. He will find that God, he's speaking of the one who, who will reconcile all things back to him. He will find out that the main theme of Scripture is not what's going on with us in our life so much. He'll find out, but the Scripture's about what God is doing. What God is, hey, God is doing something. He'll find this out. He'll see that. Raising men up from the fall. It's not about restoring mankind to his, his former glory. But he'll see that it's, God is getting man to receive his glory. Yeah. The glory of God. Now, these things that men like to debate, they don't mean a hill of beans outside of Christ Jesus, you see. You, they, they, don't, they don't have any significance. They just become a debate. They just become an argument. If you're just going to like, if you're going to like just, uh, this, what saved the scriptures on baptism? You see, if, if you take that out of the context of Christ Jesus and what he's done, you, you just got a debate or an argument or some kind of whatever you want to call it. But you've got, to, you've got to keep it in the context of Christ Jesus, what he's done. You can know all the fine points of the atonement, really. You can, you can name it off just like this, but, and you can break it down line by line. You know. Uh, but if you're not living by faith in Christ Jesus, and if you, if, you, if you haven't taken up the cross and you don't understand all these things, then it's, it's not going to do you any good. All our teachings should flow. All our discussions should flow, about, should flow out about what Christ has done. What saith the scriptures? See, it's about Jesus and what he's done. All our teachings and discussions should be centered in, in what is said in regard to Christ and his salvation. Amen. We should never attempt to discuss anything, any aspect of the doctrine apart from how it relates to Christ Jesus. Because, see, Christ Jesus brings a doctrine to us, brethren. He brings it to us. He puts substance to the form of, of the doctrine. The primary focus of Scripture has been the deliverance that comes from God by the way of Christ Jesus. That's the focus. What saith the Scriptures? That's what they're saying. The deliverance of men. Our deliverance is what the Scripture is talking about. From the power of sin and death. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures now is a favorite phrase of the Apostle Paul. <laughs> he used it all the time. He used it to connect the work of Christ Jesus to what the scriptures had said in the past. You see, it was always about Christ. That's, that's a point Paul always made. He didn't have any other issue that was important to him. He didn't have any other point to make. It was all about Jesus. So it, according to the scriptures, this is what it says here. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Yeah. You see, now you can, you can talk about the death and crucifixion of Christ, you, but you've got you to do it in the context of the scriptures. And, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's back to back, see. What saith the scriptures? The scriptures say, neither is there salvation in any other. Huh? The stone. Huh? You rejected the stone. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given and above men where we by, whereby we must be saved. Brothers, what saith the scriptures? Okay. The whole text of scriptures it's about our, our, our Lord and Savior. That's what saith the scriptures. And so when we, we attempt to go in and, and define anything, then we need to know it. it's, 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 in, it's in the context of what Christ Jesus has done. Thank you, brother. Yes.